what if my life gets worse after I quit smoking weed, after I quit using nicotine products? What if life actually gets worse? We've had this conversation before on the channel. This is a, a mindset. And you have to recognize there's two sides to this, this fear factor. There's the fear of what if I quit and my life doesn't get better? But then there's also the fear of what if I continue using this drug? What if I continue using this substance? What is my life going to look like if I continue down this path? Now, I think there's an underlying subconscious fear too, and this one I know is definitely one that I experienced. When you quit an addiction, when you quit smoking weed, when you quit using nicotine, and you have all these reasons why you want to quit, you want to improve your physical health, you want to improve your financial health, you want to improve your relationships with other people, you want to focus more on your hobbies, that is going to inherently require some degree of work. And I know in the beginning for me, getting high was relatively easy, right? Retreating to nicotine was relatively easy. Retreating to adult media content, relatively easy. But if I'm going to quit and now in theory go work on all of those goals, all of those reasons why I quit, that's going to require a bit of work for me. And to be honest, I think in the beginning I was kind of afraid of that work that I had to go put into making my life better. And I wonder if this person who asked me this question is in a similar situation or coming from a similar place. Are you scared of change? Are you scared what your life is going to look like if you don't change? Are you scared of the work that you might have to put into your sobriety and recovery process to get there? What is it actually that you're afraid of? Because I think a lot of times when we're talking about addiction, there's there's a lot of confusion as to what it is we're actually afraid of. Dr. Frank, I'm really scared if I quit smoking weed, I'm going to be depressed. Well, you're already depressed, perhaps. Then maybe that's why you're quitting. You're, you, you know, I... What's the definition of insanity? If you do the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result, that's the definition of insanity. So if I was going to continue smoking weed, continue watching adult media content, continue binge drinking, continue uh, you know, using nicotine, I could guarantee myself the same results over and over again. And those same results were getting really scary to me. Like I didn't want that. I knew what that lifestyle looked like for me. So for me, I was much less afraid of putting in the work to go have a better recovery process, a better sobriety process, and hopefully build a better life for myself, right? I'm much less scared of trying to make a YouTube video and get better at my career and get better at my relationships than I am of what my life lo would have looked like if I continue used, using weed, nicotine, adult media content, all those things. So, those are the questions that you have to, I think, ask yourself if you're facing that fear factor. Don't be afraid of something that you don't know. Like, you know, th there's uncertainty to getting sober, right? I guess to a large extent, there's certainty in addiction. Like, you know how this is going to feel. You know what the high feels like. You know, you just know it. It's a routine. It's a comfort zone. And I guess to a large extent, there is uncertainty facing life without that drug, but that's that's okay. That's a good thing. Change is what you're actually craving. That's why you're quitting. You're just probably not used to making a change at this point in your life. So that's that's new. That's uncertainty. And it makes sense that there would be some fear associated with that. I think there's a quote out there, though, just on the other side of fear is greatness. Just on the other side of fear is enjoyment. Just on the other side of fear, there's a lot of really, really good things for a majority of people out there. 
And I could say I'm li a living example of that. Just on the other side of fear for me was starting a YouTube channel. Just on the other side of fear for me was getting involved in a marriage. And don't get me wrong, those things are scary. They're intimidating. But hopefully if you're putting in the work into your sobriety and recovery process and you're doing all the things you need to be doing, you're going to have the tools you need to handle the business. You're going to have the tools you need to handle the relationship, to handle the finances, to handle whatever it is comes next in life. And my last thing would be is what are you basing that on? I, I mean, do you see a lot of people who have quit drug addictions and now are worse off in life? Because I, I don't see that too often. Maybe I'll see someone who quit drinking alcohol and they're more miserable. But realistically, I think this happens again because of a mindset. This person is under the impression that they made a sacrifice, that they gave something up, and they become miserable about that for years. We see this in people who quit smoking cigarettes too. And that's, that's nothing more than a mindset. If they can let go of the fact that they didn't give up anything, they'll be a lot less miserable right? So where where is that coming from? I think that would be my last point to this. Where is that fear coming from? Is that some irrational thought that the addictive voice in your brain is implanting in you to try and keep you addicted, to try and keep you hooked? That's my guess. Or are you basing that on someone else's experience? Because addiction is a very unique experience. Addiction is a very personal experience. So if you're basing it on someone else's journey with addiction, don't because you'd be doing yourself a huge disservice. So I think we got to figure out where those thoughts are coming from and kind of break them down a little bit deeper. If you guys have more questions about fear and quitting addictions or you know, would like to tell me about your biggest fears when it came to quitting smoking weed, quitting vaping, quitting nicotine, quitting watching porn, quitting drinking, let me know in the comments down below so I can make more video reactions to it. I really love having these types of discussions with you guys because these were thoughts that I had uh, in my own brain. And if you need a little extra help, you want to have this conversation on a weekly basis with me in a semi-private group coaching session, guys. We did launch a group coaching program. It's $24.99 a month. That's a huge savings compared to the one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is $250 per session. So be sure to check out the links below. All right, I'll see you guys in the comments. In today's brief video, I want to share with you guys three shifts in mindset that I used when I was struggling with active weed addiction. Often when I was trying to quit, I would find my brain saying to myself, Frank, you want to go smoke weed. Frank, just one more hit. Frank, you want to go buy more weed. And in today's video, I want to address how to speak back to that voice in your head when it's telling you that you want more weed. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, which are dedicated to helping people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, addictions I once struggled with. For more information about our paid and free coaching programs, be sure to check out the pinned comment, video description, or the link in the bio. Oftentimes when I would quit smoking weed, that addicted voice in my brain would start to ramp up. And I would find myself quitting, but that voice would say, Frank, you want to go smoke weed. Frank, you want to go buy some weed. Frank, you want to stop by the gas station for more nicotine. And what I realized is just because my brain wants something doesn't mean it needs to get or that it's going to get that something. And this is an incredibly powerful shift in mindset. When you can sit there with yourself and your brain is telling you, you want something, go smoke weed, go use nicotine, go watch porn. And when you develop the callus and the ability to say to your brain, it doesn't matter. I don't care what you want. You're not getting that thing because I'm going to do what I want to do, not what you want to do. And what I want to do is quit the drug. What I want to do is pursue the opportunities that sobriety provides. What I want to do is get more money in my bank account, get better health. To sit there and deny your brain of something that it wants 
is an incredibly powerful shift in mindset. And this is a benefit that anyone struggling with addiction stands to obtain by quitting. And I would consider this a superpower. There are millions, if not thousands of people every day who go through life wanting things that aren't necessarily good for them, that they shouldn't necessarily have, who succumb to that thought process of wanting without even thinking twice about it. When you quit a drug, when you pursue recovery, every day, especially early on, you're challenged with with that conversation. And the more you callous your mind and the more you train your brain to, to say no, wow, that is a superpower that you can start to apply to multiple aspects of your life. To sit there in a conversation with yourself when your brain is saying you want to go smoke weed and you're able to say it doesn't matter. You're not getting weed today. That's a powerful thing because then you can apply that to, I don't want to work out today. Too bad. You're going to work out. I don't want to wake up for work today. Too bad. You're going to wake up. I don't want to quit my job to pursue uh, entrepreneurship or a side hustle. Too bad. We're going to do it anyways. This is you taking back control. That's the first shift in mindset. Just because you want something doesn't mean that you're going to go after it. And this applies to many areas of life. And this is really the second shift in mindset. There's many things in life that people want that they don't actually achieve or that they don't actually obtain. There was many points in my life where I wanted better health, where I wanted more money, where I wanted a different job, where I wanted a different relationship. And I didn't get any of those things. Now, A large reason why I didn't was because I would simply go pursue addiction versus pursuing those actual things that I wanted in life. But what I'm trying to explain is just because you want something doesn't mean that you have to have it, doesn't mean that you need to feed it to yourself. And people think, well, If I want something, I always get it. And what I'm trying to explain is that's not true. You go through your day-to-day life wanting various different things that you may never get. And guess what? You're okay. You're still here. You're still watching this video. So when your brain is telling you you want weed, remind yourself, hey, there's a lot of things in life that I've wanted. Some I've achieved. Some I haven't achieved. And it's going to be okay. I'm still going to wake up tomorrow. I'm still going to be able to speak. I'm still going to be able to move. I'm still going to be able to interact with the world. Just because I want something, if I don't get it, it's not the end of the world. Just just trying to put wanting in perspective because it can feel like our world is going to crumble when we really want something, but realizing like, oh, there's a lot of things I want and I don't always get those things and I can think of a million examples that cross my mind every day makes it a little less overwhelming. The third shift in mindset is refocusing on the things that you actually want in life. When your brain is telling you you want weed, you have to Talk back and you have to say, no, it's not weed that I want because I don't want active addiction. I don't want less money in my bank account. I don't want burned relationships. I don't want my health to deteriorate any further. But what I do want is I want to rebuild my health. I do want to save my money. I do want to pursue that side hustle. I do want to pursue that next level in my career or in my faith or in my relationship. Focus on the things and reiterate the things to yourself that you actually want out of life. Every time that addictive voice sneaks into your brain and tells you you want the drug, ask yourself, is it really more addiction that I want? Because there's a reason you're quitting. There's a reason why you're watching this video. And I promise you, it's not because you want more of the drug. It's not because you want more of whatever addiction has provided you with thus far in your life. Refocus on the things that you actually want in life. Now, just because you want something, as I said earlier, doesn't mean you're going to get it. So once you've refocused on the things that you actually want, start to take action towards those things. If it's more money, start saving, start investing. If it's starting a business, start learning how to do that. If it's a side hustle, start diving into it. If it's better physical health, start walking, start swimming, start going to the gym. Start to take action on the things that you actually want to make them become a reality. And this is something that I know with 
at 100% certainty you are capable of. Because when you've wanted weed, you have found a way of getting it. When you needed money to buy weed that you wanted, you have found a way to do that. And let's say money hasn't been a problem for you. Many people who call my offices, money is no issue to them. But they wanted a better life still. They wanted something else that weed was holding back. Start taking actions on those things. If it's your business, start working more on your business. If it's your relationship, start fixing it. Now, lastly, when you do quit, there may be this overwhelming feeling of, you know, I've quit for three or four months. I've quit for a year. I've quit for five years. But I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where I thought I would have been. I'm not where I want to be. That's okay because it's important to remember at least you're not where you once were. Every day I wake up and I look at a situation and I I can say I go through a lot of things relatively, I don't want to say unsatisfied, but I certainly want more out of life. And I think that's a really good thing. I'm not someone who's like, oh, be happy with what you have. Yes, be happy with what you have. But I'm certainly of the mindset of wanting more for myself, wanting better for myself, for my family, for people I care about, certainly of that mindset. And sometimes that that mindset can become overwhelming. And it's important for me and for you to remind yourself, granted, I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I'm certainly better off than where I was. And I'm going to keep going. For that reason, I'm going to keep pushing forward. I'm going to acknowledge the things I've achieved, and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep creating. I'm going to keep wanting. That's not going to go away. But I'm going to acknowledge things certainly weren't as bad as they once were when I was in active addiction. So, guys, I hope these shifts in mindset help you if you're struggling with weed addiction or if you're pretty far into your quit. Maybe this is something that crosses your mind. And I would encourage you guys to use these mindsets and apply them after you've quit smoking weed to multiple aspects of life, business, relationships, faith, impulse purchasing, eating. Apply this to many areas of life. You are are learning so many tools by quitting a drug. And if you start applying them, I promise you quitting can become a life-changing experience. If you want more information about our one-on-one coaching or about our free guide to quitting weed, check out the pinned comment, the link in the video description, or the link in the bio. Tons of resources out there for you guys. In today's